Social Security, and One More Year Syndrome. Hi, this is financial planner Sean Mullaney. Let's discuss. So the decision as to whether or not to retire, when to retire, it is, as the comedian Gary Goleman says, fraught, right? And why is it fraught? Well, it has emotional aspects to it. It has financial aspects to it. And it even has social security aspects to it. And in this video, I'm going to explore that latter aspect, right? This idea of, well, wait a minute. What if I, I work one more year or I don't work one more year? What's that going to do to my social security benefit? And I'm here to tell you there's actually a way to think about this. And before we go much further, I just want to say that I want to think about this in terms of somebody born in 1960 or later. So generally speaking, their full retirement age, which is what we're going to use for purposes of this video, is age 67, right? What's the impact of, of retiring this year or maybe working another year on our Social Security benefit when we are retired at full retirement age at 67, right? Just using that for simplification purposes. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff in terms of do you delay to age 70 or take early. We're not talking about that tonight. All right. Well, let's say we're thinking about working one more year for $100,000, right? In order to sort of assess this, we have to think about, well, what is Social Security? What's the benefit? And the benefit is generally this. Social Security is a progressive income replacement program. What it's doing is it's tracking your earnings annually and saying, what are the highest 35 years of earnings? Inflation adjusted, right? So you had some earnings from the year 2005. They're stated differently based on an inflation factor in the year 2023 and so on and so forth. Um, what are your highest 35 years? And then we're going to replace um, an average of that. And we're going to do it based on bands of income, right? So what we do is we just tally up our highest 35 years in the workplace, inflation adjusted as long as those years were before turning age 60. In our 60s and 70s, those years don't get inflation adjusted, but they still can count if they are in our highest 35. Uh, so what we're doing is we're just tallying up the highest 35, divide by 35, right, to get an average. And then we see what that average is, and then we... Uh, apply it against the Social Security income replacement bands. Now, the first band, up to $13,380 in the year 2023, that number generally is inflation-adjusted annually, uh, but it's about a little over 1000 a month, right? That's replaced at 90%. Um, and to have that number full, that band fully filled, in 2023, you have to have about 470 thousand of career uh, inflation adjusted earnings, which if you're considering retirement, almost certainly you have that, right? It's hard to get to a retirement place in most cases without having earned at least a half million dollars, probably a lot more in your career. Um, and then we look at, so that band up to an average of about 13,380 a year, replace it 90%. Then the next band, which goes all the way into a little over $80,000 is replaced at 32%. And then the last band is replaced at only 15%, those, earning, those average annual earnings over 80000 and some change. Okay, and then just remember too, every year your earnings are credited up to the FICA cap. So you can make a million dollars in the year 2023 at your W-2 job. Congratulations, I feel good for you. But your, fight, your Social Security credit is only 160200 this year. That's the FICA cap. So those are the, the max credited earnings this year. Now, those will be inflation adjusted, assuming you're under age 60, right? So, all right, now let's think about one more year syndrome and Social Security and thinking about, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about retirement. I think my finances are there. I think my assets, my other income, whatever it is, I think that's there. And I think emotionally, I'm ready re to retire. I think I'm there, you know, hypothetically. But, you know, maybe I'm thinking, well, what about the impact on Social Security? I mean, I don't want to really hurt my record a whole lot. What's going to happen? Let's say I'm under age 60 and I haven't worked 35 years. So I'd have at least one zero on my record, which this year's earnings would replace. And career, I'm at about 2.5 million of earnings, which would put me in that 32% band in terms of replacement, your average er annual inflation adjusted earnings would be about 71,000 and some change in that scenario over the 35 years. So I'm thinking about working for another $100,000 salary for one more year 
and let's see what that does to my Social Security at age 67. Well, you have to do some math, and the math is actually pretty simple from a back-of-the-envelope perspective. What you do is you take your annual salary, the 100000 you divide it by 35 to make it part of your average annual earnings, right? That you have to do. So you do 100000 you do that divided by 35. You take that quotient and you multiply it by your income replacement band. And you haven't hit the 80000 average annual earnings yet, so you're still in that 32% income replacement band. So by my math, you get from a $100,000 annual salary, when you're in the 32% replacement band, you're gonna get about $914 of average of annual benefit from Social Security for working that one more year at the $100,000 salary. And look, that'll be inflation adjusted. That can be increased by delaying, right? It can go over $1,100 if you delay uh, to age 70. Um, so look, $914, where I'm from, that's real money. If I put $914 in U.S. currency on the table right now, you'd probably scoop it up pretty quick. But for if you're otherwise financially and emotionally prepared for retirement, would you delay retirement one more year just to secure something like $914 more annually from Social Security at full retirement age, right? I think for most Americans, the answer would be no if they were otherwise financially and emotionally ready to retire. What I have done is I've put in the description below, so look at the description, show notes below, a blog post. I titled it uh, Early Retirement and Social Security. It sort of goes over how to look at some of these numbers. Um, but I think what you're going to find is in many cases, uh, Social Security is by itself usually not a reason to have one more year syndrome and to delay retirement. Now, you got to look at the entire financial picture, right? So it's part of the financial picture. But if the finances are otherwise there, the detriment of losing one year of work, generally speaking, because it's a 35-year average, is generally just not that material when we're trying to make this decision as to whether or not to retire. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please mash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.